The US president has seen his time in office, come with some highs and lows, as he haphazardly bluffs his way through the office he paid to win. And much like a roller coaster that once delivered panoramic views, his ride has truly hit rock bottom. The announcement that the US has seen 10 million people now file jobless claims due to a combination of both the downturn of Trump's economic policies and of course the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus, of which the US now has the worst case record in the world. Well, this is, of course, one of the most horrible numbers we have seen in terms of unemployment claims for forever, frankly, historically, we've never seen this before. 6.6 million uh, uh, unemployment claims in addition to 3.2 million last week. So this brings us uh, over uh, 10 million unemployment claims uh, in just two weeks time. Um, this obviously is going to drive up the un unemployment rate enormously. It could go up as much to, you know, 10 percent. The reactions felt across the US are interesting, with one Twitter user stating that the US has seen 22 million jobs created in the last 10 years. Yet in the last two weeks alone, 10 million have been lost. It, it, it is important for us to recognize that the surge in unemployment claims is an intentional policy response to the public health crisis. Uh, but the question is really, when will unemployment claims start to moderate? and to what level will they slow down to because that that will signal whether these are just temporary layoffs or whether businesses are actually going out uh, while well, going out of business and actually permanently laying off workers that's the concern for the long term are these layoffs just temporary or when this crisis is over will people be able to get back to work pretty soon? Another Twitter user pointed out that the US is being very economical with the truth over their unemployment numbers, stating that in March, only 700,000 jobs were lost. Let's therefore wait and see how many they announced for April. However, employers around the US are very concerned about their staff, with many of those being laid off coming from the lower echelons of the employment ladder, with the service industry and hospitality industry suffering the most. Oh, I'm... I'm as nervous and worried as anybody is, you know, you, you still have, I mean, I still have a lot of people on payroll. Um, and I still have a lot of, we still have to get ready. I mean, we're getting ready to open restaurants. We're coming into the springtime and we have restaurants. So it's supposed to be opening in, in Nashville, supposed to be opening in um, all of America. We've got a bunch of projects that we're tabling right now that are, that are held, but you know what? Business will come business will come. We will rebound. The restaurant industry is incredibly resilient. Um, it's just the staying power right now that's so critical. What now remains to be seen is whether the US government will step up to the mark and assure the poorer people of its nation that the state is in fact behind them, not just in the short term, but also in the long term, as if and when the COVID-19 virus finally passes, for how long after will the people pay for the bailouts they needed to survive on? When Donald Trump sat down with Chinese President Xi Jinping in his first years as president, all seemed to be going well between the two men. Soon after, Trump seemed to alienate the Chinese over accusations and allegations of trade warfare and currency manipulation. Trump, in his ever obnoxious way, stated that he was the chosen one to stand up to the Chinese powerhouse. Somebody, excuse me, somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. So I'm taking on China. I'm taking on China on trade. And you know what? We're winning. Because we're the piggy bank. We're the one that all these countries, including the European Union, wants to rob and takes advantage of. Trump was clearly on an economic war with the Chinese. Yet, the tables soon turned on the 45th president as a new generation of war found its way onto the shores of the US in the form of the COVID-19 virus. I think I'll make sure I highlight that our Commander-in-Chief has declared war on COVID-19. So it is a wartime footing that we're on, and we are treating this like a large military campaign. And as we look at that, it is, it is a challenging campaign, though, because it is an invisible enemy. And so as we try to work our way through it, both in maintaining our ability to perform our other missions like Homeland Defense, as well as provide support across the nation for COVID-19, uh, trying to do so while battling this invisible uh, enemy is, has in fact proven to be challenging. 
with Trump now fighting a battle on his home front, he's clearly lost his edge on the international arena, both due to his calamitous past decisions, but also due to the fact that the American economy will not be able to catch up with the Chinese ones as predicted, suggesting they'll never be able to get back their number one position. In fact, the US could see its crown lost as early as this year, or at least at the start of next, with China likely to surpass the US economy. Further down the line, the US could slip further back as the Indian economy also leapfrogs the US. The next 10 years could see six Asian economies in the top 10, leaving the US and Europe against the ropes. So what now remains to be seen is the damage done to the US. Has Trump's trump card, namely the economy, actually transcended into a joker in the pack? And will it hence lose him his next term in office? The next 12 months will certainly answer that question.